To North Vietnamese leaders, the latest battles were proof that the Americans would not use their air power to defend South Vietnam. There was also good news from the Soviet Union, the promise of huge quantities of extra weapons and supplies. The Soviets were keen to increase their influence in the region and believed they were backing a winner. Even though North Vietnam now had the support it needed, its leaders still meant to move cautiously. But General Tran Van Tra, the commander in charge of Southern forces, pushed for decisive action. Once more, he won agreement for a sizable attack, but not for a full-scale campaign. South Vietnamese generals had long ago been given clear orders about how they were to react to any northern offensive. They were to hold on to every scrap of southern territory, and their forces had been deployed for a defense on all fronts. On March 1, 1975, the attack planned by General Tran Van Tra was unleashed in the Central Highlands. As ordered, government forces meant to stand and fight. But suddenly, President Thieu, the southern leader, changed the plan completely. The new South Vietnamese strategy was to hold all of the country below the town of Thuy Ha. Areas previously held by the North Vietnamese would be retaken. Above Thuy Ha, a series of defense lines would be created north and west of Hue, Da Nang, Quang Nai, and Quy Nong. If need be, the lines could be abandoned one after the other in an orderly withdrawal until a solid defense could be mounted. This latest North Vietnamese attack had begun with diversionary actions against the strategic cities of Pleiku and Can Tum. But the real target to capture was Ban Mi Tuet, and the attack began on March 10th. The Southern 23rd Division mounted a counterattack, but failed hopelessly when South Vietnamese planes scored a direct hit on their own divisional operations center, ending any organized defense. A new plan was then put into effect. South Vietnamese army units in Can Tum and Pleiku provinces were ordered to withdraw to the coast and hold Thuy Ha along Route 7B. President Thieu's order to the South Vietnamese army to abandon the Central Highlands did not include the regional military forces and the militia. As news leaked out, they and the civilian population panicked. What was supposed to be an orderly withdrawal soon descended into complete chaos. Military units, their families, and 400,000 fleeing civilians jammed the primitive road. The 120-mile retreat down Route 7B was a nightmare. North Vietnamese artillery shelled the column, and NVA infantry blocked the road. Food and water ran out. A South Vietnamese Ranger Battalion of 700 men successfully cleared the NVA roadblocks, but was itself eventually wiped out. By the time the column reached the coast, a third of the 60,000 troops that had set out were dead or missing. Of 400,000 civilians, a quarter had disappeared.
Meanwhile, the North Vietnamese army launched a second major attack. 100,000 men converged on the major cities of Quang Tri, Hue, and Da Nang. They were spearheaded by powerful armored forces and backed by eight full regiments of artillery. And when news of the debacle in the central highlands reached these cities, panic set in. Worse still, the South Vietnamese elite airborne division based north of Hue was ordered to return to Saigon. The North Vietnamese plan was to attack from three directions. They meant to drive southern forces back to Da Nang. There, the enemy would be trapped and destroyed. Quang Tri province was quickly captured, followed by the town of Tam Ki to the south. Refugees surged along Route 1 towards Da Nang. At the same time, the NVA advance threatened to cut Route 1. South Vietnamese army units were now ordered to abandon Hue and Chu Lai and retreat to Da Nang. On March 25, 1975, Hue, South Vietnam's third largest city, fell to the North Vietnamese Army. The mass of refugees were by now converging on Da Nang. Over two million were already crammed into the city, including tens of thousands of armed deserters. North Vietnamese rocket and artillery fire was slamming into the built-up areas and the docks. Fleets of ships and small boats crammed the harbor, and there was a frantic scramble for places. Thousands drowned or were crushed. Many were shot by troops or armed civilians in the desperate competition to escape. As 30,000 North Vietnamese troops advanced south to Da Nang, the South Vietnamese command ordered all its troops to be evacuated by sea. In the chaos, few succeeded in escaping. The scenes of panic and mayhem at the docks were repeated at Da Nang's airport. Over the next few days, the NVA just rolled into town after town without a fight, towns abandoned by the South Vietnamese forces. On March 30th, 1975, the North Vietnamese Army took Da Nang. It was just over 10 years since the first U.S. Marines had stormed ashore there. For the South, it was a shattering blow. Yet its leaders did little, clinging to the hope that American air power would finally intervene to save the day. 